What's really exciting is how Project Astra brings us closer to our vision for a universal AI assistant that is seamlessly integrated into our lives across different devices and contexts. We're going to bring capabilities like this to our products soon. These are just some examples of how people and businesses are using AI today. But some of the most exciting examples are happening across science and discovery. A powerful example is AlphaFold, a major breakthrough in predicting proteins' complex structures. That Nobel Prize toast I mentioned was a direct result of this work done by Demis and John at Google DeepMind. Demis, or should I say Sir Demis, is here today, and let's give him a round of applause. We opened up AlphaFold in 2021 free of charge to the scientific community. Today, more than 2.5 million researchers from over 190 countries are using it to develop new malaria vaccines, cancer treatments, and even plastic eating enzymes. We estimate AlphaFold has helped to save hundreds of thousands of research years. One company building on AlphaFold is Isomorphic Labs, part of Alphabet. They're using machine learning in the drug design process to improve the success rate of therapies while reducing overall time and cost. And we have partners all over the world using our cloud technologies like Sarvier here in France. Quantum computing will also help scientists discover new medicines, as well as design more efficient batteries for electric cars and accelerate progress in fusion and new energy alternatives. It's the next big paradigm shift in computing following AI, and we are making good progress. Our latest breakthrough was in December. Our state-of-the-art Willow quantum chip solved a computation in under five minutes that would take a classical computer 10 septillion years. That's one followed by 25 zeros longer than the universe has existed several times over. And it did so while reducing errors even as the number of quantum chips increased. AI helped with that, by the way, and will continue making progress on our journey to a fully error-corrected quantum computer. Now let me turn to an example that is very much reality. Fully autonomous, self-driving cars. After years of scaling the technology, including an early partnership with Renault, recent progress has been absolutely breathtaking. In 2024, Waymo operating in four cities made over four million passenger trips. One of those trips recently brought me and my parents to a park near Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. I had obviously taken Waymo's before, but watching my father, who's in his 80s, I saw the progress in a whole new light. You can see him there in the front seat, front seat totally amazed. Here's a video that brings the magic to life. For anyone struggling with dementia, do not drink cold water. You've probably heard that memory loss is all about. There are many other instances of how AI is already benefiting society. One example is expanding information access through languages. When Google Translate first started, the models relied on languages being widely represented on the web. For, but for most of the world's languages, especially in places like Africa, that wasn't the case. Using AI techniques, we added over 110 new languages to Google Translate last year, spoken by half a billion people around the world. That brings our total to 249 languages, including 60 African languages. More to come. Another huge opportunity space is health. Right here in Paris, we are excited to partner with Institute Curie to combine their world-class research with our cutting-edge AI. Our goal is to improve outcomes for women with a number of rare and deadly cancers, including identifying predictive biomarkers for certain uterine cancers or better predicting how breast cancer patients will respond to specific therapies. We are honored to work with the Institute Curie on this. In India and Thailand, we are partnering with local organizations to deliver 6 million AI screenings for diabetic retinopathy, a preventable cause of blindness and we'll do this at no cost to patients. Beyond health, AI is improving how communities respond to natural disasters. Our AI-powered flood-up forecasts now cover more than 100 countries and more than 700 million people, 
giving local communities a seven-day lead time, even in areas where data is scarce. We're also using AI to map the boundaries of large wildfires and get people accurate information in 27 countries around the world. Over the past year, it reached 30 million people and helped people get to safety during the LA wildfires last month. Our new FireSat technology will give us even better tools. Using advanced sensors and high resolution, it can detect a fire as small as five by five meters, and it's going to be a big game changer for firefighters. In all these examples, I hope you can see the massive potential for AI to benefit people, boost economies, advance science, and address humanity's greatest challenges. But these beneficial outcomes are not automatic or guaranteed. It will take all of us working together on multiple fronts to make it possible. Let me be really prescriptive about how. First, we have to enable an ecosystem of innovators and adopters. I spoke of the growing innovation ecosystem here in France earlier. How do we create more of these pockets in more places? And as Mario Draghi showed in his recent report, Europe's productivity is dependent on using these emerging technologies. And European competitiveness depends on productivity. So driving adoption is key so that the gains happen at scale and across the economy. A second area is infrastructure. We are excited for the path President Trump, President Macron, and other countries are forging here. In CapEx alone, $300 billion is already committed from the major tech companies this year. We announced last week that we expect to invest approximately $75 billion in capital expenditures in 2025. Third, we have to invest in people and prepare them for the workforce ahead. I saw a report from the World Economic Summit this year that estimates that a majority of jobs in Europe will soon be augmented by generative AI and 7% of the jobs will face automation. A report from the ILO suggests that the augmentation effect will be 6x that of possible substitution. We want to help prepare the future workforce for these realities. Grow with Google has helped train 100 million people globally in digital skills over the last decade. And now our $120 million Global AI Opportunity Fund is focused on making AI education and training available in communities around the world. We'll reach 20,000 people across 24 countries right here in Europe. Fourth, we have to act boldly to advance the most transformative applications of AI and responsibly so that everyone can benefit. That means addressing the technology's limitations, issues with accuracy and factuality, for example, as well as the risk of misapplication and misuse, like the creation of deepfakes. It also presents new complexities. For example, the impact on the future of work, the need for energy, and the digital divide. I think about how fortunate I was to have access to technology, even if it came slowly. Not everyone had the chance. With AI, we have the chance to democratize access from the start, ensure that the digital divide doesn't become an AI divide, and make AI helpful for everyone. Public policy will play an important role in delivering on these four areas. Successful policy addresses risks without stimming innovation, progress, and the positive impacts. It draws on existing laws and fills in gaps rather than creating entirely new laws wholesale. It's aligned across countries. AI can't flourish if there is a fragmented regulatory environment with different rules across different countries and regions. And finally, governments need to take a thoughtful strategic approach to AI to drive investment in infrastructure, people and adoption, including by governments themselves. This is an important and historic moment. I think when history looks back, it will see this as the beginning of a golden age of innovation. But these outcomes are not guaranteed. The biggest risk could be missing out. Every generation worries that the new technology will change the lives of the next generation for the worse. Yet, it's almost always the opposite. I grew up doing math using logarithmic tables. I was uncomfortable watching my kids learn math from smartphones. 
they've turned out just fine. We must not let our own bias for the present get in the way for the future. We have a once in a generation opportunity to improve lives at the scale of AI. Let's do everything to make it possible. To close, we have one more example of how AI is making a difference. Let's roll the video. I hope it's a funny thing.